The following footage you are about to see is pre-release footage. This is not representative of the final product. This video is technically sponsored by Square Enix as they invited me out to the media tour event. Final Fantasy is a registered trademark of Square Enix. Welcome to one of several videos for my media tour trip. This video is an overview of the changes and adjustments current jobs have seen, objective and with little to no opinion. If you want opinions, there will be a different video for that. I will be going over jobs in an order based on their role, and in the order I have them placed on my hotbars. If you wish to find the jobs you're most interested in, there should be timestamps in the description and on the video track. I will also be skipping Viper and Pictomancer due to them having much more to go over and no actual changes per se. They will have their own video. I will also not be going over potencies for most things, since those will be in flux. We've seen potencies change drastically from previous media tours, so there's no telling if something will be buffed or reduced. For an across-the-board change, basically every instance of gaining gauge enough to do your main special attacks, Reaper and Shroud, Red Mage Melee, etc., has been changed to gaining an extra buff that allows for one execution of those abilities. And a note, no, you cannot make your rotation be 1-1-1-1-1-1-1. Combos are still largely multiple buttons. Consolidation options are for specific skills. Some skills will allow you to also add a delay. Starting with the melee, one of the potency exceptions is Second Wind. They increased it from 500 potency to 800 potency. This seems like it will be a value that won't change. In that same vein, Faint is also getting a timer upgrade. Our first melee is Monk. The new gauge is attached to the Beast Chakra gauge. As expected, the base rotation is now a 2-3-4 cycle. The main thing though is that the correct skill will light up on your hotbar. You follow the lights and your base rotation will follow itself. All three sections seem to act exactly like Bootshine and Dragon Kick do now. One gives a resource, the other spends it for increased damage. To the disappointment of many, Riddle of Wind is still here. However, our Dawn Trail toolkit will be giving every riddle a reply. Earth's reply has consequently been renamed and slightly altered. Earth's reply is an AoE heal. Wind's reply is a powerful GCD that does not remove your current form. Fire's reply is your ultimate skill, is a powerful GCD, and grants you Formless Fist. This Formless Fist will likely be key for openings. Among other changes, the Brotherhood Chakra overcapping does indeed delete any overcap when it ends. Spend the chakra you have. Don't say, save it for Six-Sided Star and its new effect of getting stronger with higher chakra. Regardless of chakra amount, it likely will still be purely your ranged attack option. Speaking of chakra, to help with the button consolidation options, AoE and single target meditation buttons exist and each have their own options. So as it is now, Meditation will turn into the Forbidden Chakra, while Enlightenment is a button of its own. Now you can have two buttons, three buttons, or four buttons. Oh, and Anatmon is just gone. Dragoon has been deleted from the game with the job Hi Wesk put in its place. I see you, Xenos. Dragoon is busier than ever, contrary to the reason given for a rework. Our new huge AoEs are combos off of Dragonfire Dive and Star Diver. Rise of the Dragon and Star Cross are both OGCDs with no animation lock, with Star Diver still clipping your GCD every time. Dragon Sight is gone, but to compensate, Battle Litany has been buffed and lasts for 20 seconds. Where an opener might double weave Lance Charge and Dragon Sight, we probably now combine in Litany. Spine Shatter Dive is gone, but we have a dedicated gap closer with two charges. Gearskogel is now a minute long cooldown, given there is no more Gaze of the First Brood management. Life of the Dragon was seemingly nerfed to 20 seconds, but this is without the further change to Nestrand. Every Life of the Dragon will give you three charges of Nestrand. So we have the same number of Nestrands, but the 10 second cooldown is down to three seconds. In terms of OGCD count, this puts us even. The difference is they removed upkeep in exchange for putting more emphasis on a correct order. Every single one of our attacking OGCDs, with the exception of Wormwind Thrust, gives us access to a second skill. Gear Skogol into Nestrand, Stardiver into Starcross, 
High Jump into Mirage Dive, Dragonfire Dive into Rise of the Dragon. You have to balance getting all of these out while also getting Life Surge on your strongest hits. We also have the fifth hit in our combo string to be a new skill. It has no positional, reducing how many we need to do. Oh, and Doom Spike is still level 40. They gave us some new base combo animations, though. Ninja both got more and less changes than expected. The Hutan speed buff is now passive, with Armor Crush now giving us Kunai for a new gauge. The Kunai are for Aeolian Edge only. I saw no effect in AoE. Hutan is now the AoE version of Sweeton, so using Mei Sui for an extra health rock medium is less odd. Every ninjutsu has its own unique cases now, except Fuma Shuriken. I just hope that trick attack applies to every enemy hit. To get your new health rog, this is actually a limited thing. Dokumori is the poison spit and is an upgrade to Mug at level 66. In the Dawn Trail skill set, it gains a trait that makes your next Bavakakra or health rock an enhanced version. Tenchi Jin also gives you a new move afterward. The rest all seems the same, other than the removal of Horizon. Simply put, Ninja feels like it got even busier in openers while also gaining some flexibility in AoE. Samurai is a mixed bag. Meikyo Shisui now gives a buff that allows for the use of Tsubamegashi. You cannot use Tsubame without first using Meikyo. They also removed the ability to use Kaeshi Higanbana because it was such a trash skill. Meikyo will also give you the buff of Tendo. This gives you upgraded versions of your EI Jutsu and upgraded Kaeshi EI Jutsu. These actually have longer GCD timers, likely to sell their power. Third Eye's stronger version is a bit weird. It gives you the same amount of Kenki, but then gives you a buff. In 8 seconds, when the buff expires, you will receive a heal. It seems like a bit of a top-off kind of effect, being as powerful as current Second Wind. But extra Kenki remains a goal. Shoha, meanwhile, is fixed. It's one button, just called Shoha, and is an AoE. Sanai and Garen gain a trait to be every 60 seconds instead of 2 minutes. They still only cost 25 Kenki. However, Iki Shoten will grant you Zanshin Ready, letting you use Zanshin. That's the new skill that costs 50 Kenki. There's also an upgrade to Hakaze into Gyofu, but eh. Oh, and Kaiten is still dead, as it deserves. Reaper got few changes overall. Gluttony gives us a stronger version of Gibbet and Gallows. That big new skill we saw in the benchmark is Sacrificium, an OGCD during Enshroud. So we have to weave three skills into Enshroud windows. Then finally, after an Enshroud, we have Perfectio. Which, I don't know about you, but Perfectio is a pretty godly name. Both skills are AoE. Using everything within a single death's design 30 seconds and use Shadow of Death a second time before it falls off is barely possible. You will have to skip Harvest Moon though. If you liked Reaper before, you will probably still like it. As mentioned before, Viper is being skipped for its own video since there's more to go over. Moving on to the tanks. In addition to the roll action buffs we're getting to Rampart and Reprisal, Every 2 minute mitigation is 40% with a secondary effect on top. Paladin feels basically exactly the same with very slight adjustments. Less than Reaper. Sentinel is now Guardian, with a 1000 potency shield applied. Goring Blade can now only be used under Fight with Flight, preventing using it at the wrong time. Requiescat is now Imperator, an AoE that can be used at range and not just in melee. The two main changes are the change for Atonement to be a proper combo and your level 100 skill. Your base combo and Atonement combo will not interrupt each other. Despite it being a visually different combo, it works functionally the same. Otherwise, we now have a Blade of Honor after finishing your Magic Blade combo. This is an OGCD, so does not affect the base rotation. Warrior continues to establish its Ungabunga healer tank status. Vengeance is now Damnation, giving you a 400 potency regen for 15 seconds. This is 2000 potency. Keep in mind the total potency of Equilibrium is 2200 potency after the regen. Now let's talk about Ungabunga. Inner Chaos now has a new, even crunchier animation than Felcleave. Getting three Felcleaves under Inner Release will give you Primal Wrath. This is an OGCD. 
Primal Rend gives us Primal Ruination as a follow-up, but this is a GCD. So while there isn't a whole ton new overall, you can now do something like this. Dark Knight has a lost plunge for a new gap closer that does no damage. Notice I didn't say this about the last two tanks. They kept theirs. Hey, remember Enhanced Unmend? Anyway, the dash replaced Plunge at level 54. Shadow Wall is now Shadowed Vigil, giving a buff for 20 seconds. When hitting below 50% max HP or the timer runs out, you will be healed for 1200 potency. For those who know it, it's Excogitation. We were informed of this, but Delirium is now an upgrade of Blood Weapon, combining both effects when you hit that level. The special skills we get in Dawn Trail from Delirium look really nice, but works the same. Strangely though, Esteem no longer costs Gage. He's now just a normal cooldown. At least the new special attack we get from Esteem looks absolutely amazing. Otherwise, Dark Knight doesn't seem all too different. Gunbreaker has also lost their attacking gap closer for a dash to the target. Great Nebula is a 20% thrill of battle. Gain 20% max HP and heal for that much. Sonic Break will only work under No Mercy. Bloodfest will give us access to Reign of Beasts, also known as the Lionheart combo. As expected, this really does make the rotation feel different. Oh, and there's that AoE Hyper Velocity. At least it gives parity between single target and AoE rotations. On to the healers. Swift Cast being 40 seconds is huge and scary in equal measure. Starting with White Mage, we got a dash move at level 40. This is not a gap closer though, it's a dash. Using Presence of Mind, we get three uses of Glare 4. Despite the name, this is in fact an AoE, so it's useful in both single target and trash. It's also instant cast. Additionally, we got Medica 3, a direct upgrade of Medica 2. Our ultimate ability, Divine Caress, is on top of Temperance. We get 30 seconds to use it, so we have the ability to use it even a little bit after Temperance ends. It gives a 400 potency shield to all party members in range for 10 seconds. After it is spent or the timer expires, a 15 second regen is applied. The total potency of the regen is 1000. I will note one weird thing about this. Consider that Temperance has like, infinite range currently. The range of Divine Caress is only 15 yams. You need to keep this in mind, assuming the final ranges of skills aren't also in flux. They also kept Free Cure? Why? At least we get another Tetragrammaton charge. Scholar, everyone knows my bias against, but I'll try to keep it purely objective. Chain Stratagem is still a single target, but combos into an AoE dot. This makes it actually usable in trash pools. Sucker has been given an upgraded version as well. Recitation to a 60 second cooldown is huge. The main draw of Scholar's new kit is the Ascended Angel Mode, Seraphism. This has a ton of effects to match its 3 minute cooldown. You cannot stack this with Dissipation. There is also a slight delay on activation. You will have a full GCD between activation and the buff actually applying. This is easy to see with being able to use Adloquium immediately after despite the buff replacing both it and upgraded Sucker with different skills. These are instant cast. You do not have to cast either of them. So while you will be doing GCD healing rather than relying on all your OGCD abilities, they very much are enhanced. The Adlo skill is 360 potency, for example. They do cost the same amount of MP. There's still more effects, though. Emergency Tactics is set to a 1 second cooldown, so you can spam pure heals even. Finally, there is a regen to everyone for 100 potency. Unfortunately, it's on the normal 3 second server tick. The power of this skill really is going to depend on fight design. If something requires Scholar to be GCD healing that hard, this is going to be an absolutely disgusting skill. If reliance of GCD healing remains low, this isn't that good. Astrologian is definitely the one to watch, with doing the most unexpected thing in the world. They removed Undraw. More seriously, the card system has gotten overhauled back toward the original card system. 
almost every card has a unique effect. But they have not introduced randomness into the system after Shadowbringers entirely removed it. We now have four play buttons, one for each of the slots, including Minor Arcana. It is on a minute-long cooldown and restores 500 MP currently. We start with Astral Draw, giving us Balance, Arrow, Spire, and Lord. Balance keeps the same effect, a 6% damage increase on melee and tanks for 15 seconds. Arrow is a 10% increase to healing received on a chosen target. This applies to all actions, other than any very specific exceptions. This is also 15 seconds. Spire is a 300 potency shield on the target, lasting 30 seconds or until spent. Lord remains an attacking card. Then it swaps to Umbral Draw and will alternate. Spear, Bolt, Ewer, and Lady are the Umbral cards. Spear will still give ranged mage and healer jobs a 6% damage increase for 15 seconds. Bolt is 10% mitigation on a target for 15 seconds. Good for tank busters or maybe for special targeted mechanics. Ewer is a 200 potency hot for 15 seconds, or a total 1000 potency. Please give this new system a shot. Of course, this isn't all we got. Essential Dignity stacks up to three charges. Aspected Helios is upgraded like the other healers. Divination will now give you the ability to cast Oracle, a single-use attack on an OGCD. Since you won't be spamming cards, you have room for it now. Neutral Sect comes with Sun Sign, a separate button you can press that gives the party 10% mitigation for 15 seconds. It's a simple effect for a capstone, but given Astro's long-standing complexity for individual skills, something that simply just reduced damage is nice to see. Sage got a bunch of stuff. Of course, there's a stronger Eucrasian Prognosis. Eucrasian Discrasia is an AoE dot. It likely isn't worth using in single target come final potencies, but this could be a return to the arrow three days otherwise. It has a 400 potency total as of the tour, and Dosis is now 360 potency. Notably, this is also a level 82 skill, not even a Dawn Trail exclusive. Psyche is an AoE on a target, does good damage while only being a 60 second cooldown. Zoe and Soteria are also getting a lowered cooldown to 60 seconds. Fizz's 2 also has its healing boost effect upgraded to 15 seconds rather than 10. Most notably is Philosophia, which is both a 20% healing increase and a party-wide Cardia. It even stacks with Cardia, being a unique effect. The one problem is it is only a 20 yomp range, so make sure it isn't when everyone is extremely spread out. Moving on to the Magic DPS, Swiftcast is the main important change here, still with a 40 second cooldown. Also, Adel improved to 15 seconds. Black Mage. Sharp Cast is gone. Sharp Cast is gone. I don't need to say anything else for you to understand just how deeply Black Mage has been reworked. Sharp Cast is gone. For general changes, we can now move ley lines once per ley lines use. Let's take this one step at a time. Firstly, Thunder spells are now High Thunder, but Thunder works entirely different now. You cannot use Thunder normally. Thundercloud has been changed to Thunderhead, which is granted when you change Astral or Umbral state, including going from no state to either of them. There is now no RNG on Thunder procs. Ice spells now restore MP based off of how many stacks of Umbral Ice you have. 25%, 50%, 100%. This includes Umbral Soul, which is still level 76. Good luck, you Cobb and TWR gamers. Paradox is now only for fire, no longer in ice, and is an instant cast. You also seem to always get one use of Paradox in fire phase. Even Transpose turns fire into Paradox. This will grant fire starter, guaranteed, while fire remains only a random chance. There's no reason to cast normal fire anymore, it seems. Mana Font has been buffed to an extreme degree, with a small requirement of only being usable in Astral Fire. You wouldn't use it in Ice anyway. Gives you basically all of your resources. AF3, Umbral Hearts, Full MP, a Paradox, and a Thunderhead. 
The guaranteed fire starter from Paradox means you technically got both sharp cast effects. Our goal is to cast six fire fours within the window, or two flares for AoE. So we can use what I've been calling Explosion instead of its proper name, Flare Star. It does not give you Astral Fire or cost MP. You can see me doing my testing while trying to avoid triple cast entirely, so I didn't try to push the limit of if the given gear could do a set of four fire fours in a row. This is a very different experience. Same core, but many changes to how you interact with the core that essentially make it a brand new job. I fully expect Black Mage mains are going to hate this. Summoner got very little. Searing Light has a combo attack that is also an OGCD. Festa is stronger. Most importantly though is the Solar Bahamut edition. Not only is it the strongest form, it is the only form with a unique action. Solar Bahamut has an Astral and an Kindle attack, but also an AoE heal of 500 potency. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. Oh, and Physic is still literally useless, healing half of a percent of your max HP. Red Mage got far more than expected. For the basic changes, we have AoE attacks now having an actual combo, which now costs 50-50 mana instead of the current 60-60. Sprint still eats your dual cast, unfortunately. Vice of Thorns is an added attack from using Embolden. Acceleration now gives an added action of Grand Impact. You can use your acceleration before or after the Grand Impact use. And finally, Magnification. Doing your full melee finisher will grant you an additional attack. This is not a finisher, but an OGCD of its own called Cineration. It only technically is a further finisher because of needing to get through resolution first. Aside from general potency boost, that's quick to go through, but I will also note that it all feels nice to me. Pictomancer is not being gone over here since there's a lot more to go over with it. Range DPS get the same second wind upgrade as the melees. They all also get an upgrade to their party mitigation to 15% damage reduction. Bard got potentially the most exciting change at the live letter. Being able to play your songs without a target is absolutely huge quality of life. You still need to be in combat, but you don't need to let downtime ruin your songs. Blood letter has an improved version. Straight Shot Ready also has a new name of a Hawk's Eye. Barrage now gives access to a new skill, Resident Arrow. Being an AoE, Barrage does not work on this. Meanwhile, our capstone is Radiant Encore. After using Radiant Finale, it becomes available. Much like Finale, its power increases with more coda. It also is another AoE. Also note, at level 25, we have the return of Wide Volley. This is a low-level version of Shadowbite, as placing it on the hotbar turns it into Shadowbite. This will make the leveling experience a bit busier and engaging for AoE. Machinist seems to be the same. Goss Round and Ricochet got upgraded versions. Heat Blast 2, but at level 68. There were three main additions. You can now charge two drills slash bioblaster. Chainsaw combos into Excavator, which seemingly has the same potency as Chainsaw and all the others. The big new thing for Machinist is the America attack. Using Barrel Stabilizer will give you a use of it. Reassemble doesn't work on it, and won't waste the buff if you do try to use it. Finally, we have Dancer. Standard Step will now give a proc of Last Dance a new GCD. Flourish will grant you a new and stronger version of Standard Finish, granting you the step buff all the same. No need to do the dance steps, it's automatically full power. It even gives you Last Dance after. I am unsure if this means we will be entirely replacing Standard Step mid-fight, but there's a chance. Technical Finish will give you a proc of an upgraded Saber Dance. It still costs 50 Esprit Gauge, but Dance of the Dawn looks damn cool to look at. That concludes the overview of the changes and additions to every job. I may have missed details here or there, as this was my first time at one of these events and had to try to budget time for a massive 21 jobs as well as getting distracted with other things. Be sure to check out the coverage of other people, perhaps mains of those jobs. 
If you want to see the rest of my videos, check the playlist or the links in the description. I should have one video out per hour just to space them out slightly. Thank you very much for watching, thank you to my patrons for supporting me directly, and thank you very much for inviting me to the media tour. Please be sure to rate the video, share it around, comment on it, subscribe to my channel, maybe even join my Patreon, or you can join the Discord or come to watch my streams on Twitch. All the links are below in the description. Your support is key and is a large part of why I was given this opportunity, I am sure. May the power of Anne and Hogs lay waste to your enemies.